From fatal accidents to hit and runs, it has been a busy weekend for law enforcement agencies. We're going to show you the warnings to drivers that they have for you this holiday weekend. And scary moments for shoppers inside an East County Walmart, what led to the closure of the store for several hours. Plus, why getting room service might take a little longer than usual for some travelers in California this 4th of July holiday. And from Jamaica to the United States, Elaine Williams finally calls it a career. Yes. We are holding on to much of the warmth that we saw over the course of the weekend. That will stay consistent through your Independence Day tomorrow before we notice some more substantial cool down going through the rest of the week. We'll take a look at your extended eight day forecast. It is Monday, July 3rd in Europe with CBS 8. And thank you for joining us on this extended holiday weekend. It's 6 a.m. on Monday. Good morning, I'm Carrie Lane. And I'm Dana Marie McNichol. Eric and Netta are off. Now, of course, we just talked about those fatal accidents, those DUIs, hit and runs. SCPD and HCHP officers, they've really had a busy weekend. It's a reminder of just how dangerous our roads can be over a holiday weekend. CBS 8's Chris Grow is live outside CHP headquarters in Kearney Mesa with a message from officers to keep everybody safe. Hi, Chris. Hey, thank you so much, uh, Dana Marie there and Carrie. It cannot be said enough times here that people need to make sure that they have a plan if they're going to be going out and enjoying the holiday, right? We've got Monday, we've got Tuesday. This is a time to celebrate with family, and this isn't, you know, a time to get behind the wheel when you've been drinking or potentially uh, if you've consumed any drugs. Again, you want to make sure that you not only keep yourself safe, your loved ones, and the fellow drivers around you. This could impact so many people, this terrible decision. In fact, take a look what happened over our weekend. It starts over in the North County on the 78 where somebody was killed. Another person was seriously injured in what CHP is investigating as a DUI crash, as something that was caused here by both alcohol and potentially speed. This happened here on Melrose and Emerald. We saw it affecting and impacting a number of drivers there as lanes were closed at Vista Village for several hours. Then another scary situation on the eight in the college area. We actually saw an officer conducting a field sobriety test had to get off the road to avoid getting hit. They were investigating a DUI incident when another car crashed into the back of their CHP vehicle. That car flipped onto its rooftops. Officers were able to get that driver out and they are investigating if that also was DUI related. And as far as arrests, we know that San Diego police, they put out their statistics in PB at a DUI checkpoint. They had 11 arrests that were made out of a thousand drivers or so that were screened. 10 were for alcohol, one for drugs, which again, another reminder. If you drive high, you will get a DUI. That's been the message that's been put out on those Cal transports all over our freeways this weekend. And of course, we know this weekend extends into the weekday for the next really Monday, today, Tuesday, and even Wednesday, we are expecting to see both CHP as well as San Diego Police Department, the Sheriff's Department all out in full force in several of our cities, trying to make sure that we stay safe when out on the road and that we obey the laws. Dana Marie and Carrie. And there's no excuse these days. We have Uber and we have Lyft, so please make sure you have a safe driver if you are going out this holiday weekend. California is the number one state for driving deaths over the 4th of July holiday. That's according to Jerry Carr Insurance. Now, a new study found that in California, there have been more than 400 traffic deaths around July 4th over the last decade. Researchers also found that the most dangerous time to drive around the holiday is 8 p.m. to midnight, with most crashes happening around 9 to 10 p.m. The safest time to drive, 6 a.m. to 10 a.m., so please be careful out there. Meanwhile, three people are in custody this morning after Oceanside police officers arrested them during what they say was a high-risk traffic stop. It happened on North Harbor Drive last night. It's unclear why police stopped the car or how many officers were actually there, but they did tell us that some officers involved got hurt. They say the three inside the car were, quote, uncooperative and also had a dog. CHP assisted Oceanside police in that incident. And a Walmart that was forced to close early in Santee yesterday is set to be open this morning. Now, last night, after a seven hour standoff, Sheriff's deputies arrested a man at the store on Town Center Parkway. A person on scene told us the man was climbing on the shelves in the store and refusing to get down. This prompted the closure and response from law enforcement. It's kind of insane that it happens a few blocks right away from you, but uh, I mean, you hear it from time to time. 
Now, sheriff's deputies say the man was armed with two knives and a hatchet. The man was also threatening to kill deputies and told deputies to shoot him. After, after seven hours, the man surrendered. He was taken to the hospital for a mental evaluation. And later this morning, a judge is expected to rule on whether a doctor and nurse at the Las Colinas Jail in Santee will go to trial. This is in connection with a woman's death in 2019. The on-duty jail nurse, Danali Pascua, and corrections officer and Dr. Frederike von Littig, they're both charged with involuntary manslaughter. The inmate, 24-year-old 24, 24 Elisa Serna, was pregnant and suffering drug and alcohol withdrawal when she was found dead inside her cell in 2019. Prosecutors allege the nurse saw Cerna fall against a wall in the cell, hitting her head, and no medical aid was administered for nearly an hour. She was being held in a medical isolation cell. She was supposed to be monitored, monitored by the jail medical staff. Now, if convicted, the doctor and nurse face a maximum of four years in state prison. So we have some new information this morning about a house fire. This took place in Lemon Grove. San Diego deputies say they were originally responding to reports of an assault with a deadly weapon at the home on Taft Street. And when they got there, that's when they saw the flames. This happened around 315 yesterday afternoon. Heartland Fire says the fire killed a dog and destroyed the home. One person was sent to the hospital but is expected to be okay. Another was arrested. The cause of this fire is still unknown. Imperial Beach and San Diego fire crews say they're working to mop up a fire that broke out in South Bay. It's called the Monument Fire. It began near Monument Road and Saturn Boulevard, burning four acres. San Diego Fire tweeted about the fire around 2.30 yesterday afternoon, calling it difficult to access. Air support was called in, as you see there on your screen. They were able to put the flames out. Cal Fire says crews created a barrier around the flames by digging into the earth. This was all to stop the spread. So far, no evacuations are in place and no structures are threatened. Meanwhile, fire crews also battled a small vegetation fire near Vulcan Mountain. They called it the 52 fire. This is smoke from the fire captured by alert California cameras yesterday. Firefighters stopped the fire spread less than an hour after it was reported. They worked quickly. It only burned one acre, thankfully. We haven't heard about any reports of damage. Evan Arani standing by with a look at our forecast. Obviously a big weekend. Yes. And a lot of people out. We have to remember with fireworks and all that. First of all, they're illegal. But second of all, we don't want to start anything. Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That is a huge concern, especially with all the dry brush that we now mm -hmm. have. It was beautiful, green, lush for a couple months. It was so up there. pretty while it was like <laughs> that. And now it's just brown uh -huh. and dry. Yeah. And yes, that's the trouble that we have out there. Going to be another warm one outside this afternoon. Coastline staying a bit more moderate with that dense marine layer on hand. Coastal Eddie has been kicked up and it's uh, allowed for uh, cooler temperatures to persist along the coast. Afternoon conditions across your inland valleys, mountains, deserts will still going to stay pretty hot out there, but coast is going to look a lot like this for the next couple hours between now and about 8:39 a.m. Very similar to yesterday. Above those clouds, you've got the blue. This is San Miguel, but showing just how far east those clouds are stretching. Sunrise 545. So we have technically seen the sunrise, but those clouds are blocking us from uh, seeing much of it. Sunset's going to come at 8 p.m. on the dot. Forecast shows 70s for the coastline, upper 80s inland, low 90s for the mountains, and 116 to 118 for the deserts. Brago Springs going for 116. Ocotillo Wells going for 118 this afternoon. So heat advisory, excessive heat warning both remain. And everywhere you are besides the coast, especially just east of the coast, that's where you'll start to see those temperatures in that 10, 15 degree above average range. Although cloud cover is still pretty dense out there along the coast and stretching to some of your western valleys. Santee and El Cajon, 88 degrees this afternoon, 20 degrees warmer than what we've got along the coast in La Jolla. So that sea breeze is going to be the saving grace, keeping the coast in the more uh, average range. 79 this afternoon for Vista, 83 for San Marcos, 69 degrees for Encinitas. If you're along the coast, you're wondering what all the fuss is about about the heat, and then you start to make your way east and Julian's at 91 this afternoon, Campo 97. Five day forecast shows that between today and tomorrow will start a little bit of a cool down, but a more substantial drop in temperatures is expected from Wednesday through the upcoming weekend. That's where we start to head back toward average, but still going to be a hot one for tomorrow. A few clouds passing by along the coast for the big bay boom. Let's take a look at your border wait times here at 609 on the clock. CBP website has an update for us right now. 
It is a 25 minute wait time at the San Ysidro Port of Entry. Otay Mesa Port of Entry, you're looking at about a 30 minute wait right now, so nothing too impactful. We do expect these wait times to increase uh, around the 4th of July, so tomorrow, as well as the day after. So keep in mind around the holidays, we do tend to see uh, an uptick in those uh, wait times out there. Back to you too. All right, thanks, Evan. Multiple mass shootings rock American cities over the weekend. Still ahead, the latest on those investigations in Wichita and Baltimore, where teenagers were caught in the crossfire. And two major strikes are underway in the U.S. One affects travelers. The other affects the entertainment industry. We'll have these stories and so much more on the other side of the break.